Hello, everybody. So I work at the uh, University of Hong Kong in astrobiology, and I'm also affiliated with the laboratory for space research. And I have a, a variable interest in astrobiology. Uh, so I'm interested in the origins and early evolution of life on Earth, and also the potential habitability of Titan. That's a bit loud. Um, so, as most of you will know, Titan is the largest moon of Saturn, and it has lots of complex organics on the surface coming from the upper atmosphere. And we also have these lakes of alkanes, which are obviously very cold in order to get liquid alkanes, and some of these can be very large. So, if you're going to have, it's going to be quite difficult to have any water-based life on the surface of Titan. So, I'm interested in the possibility of alkane-based rather than water-based life. And in particular, I'm going to be talking about what could form a cell membrane-like structure and give some examples of experimental work I've conducted. So the first thing is, why is it important, really, to do this type of work? Why do we need to look at the types of chemistries and structures that could form something that's not like terrestrial life? Well, if we want to go out and find such life, and look for biosignatures, we really need to have an idea of what to look for. Also, if you're looking into the ethics of looking for these things, and we don't really want to destroy them whilst looking for them, it also sort of works into that kind of thing. So, people have already theorized, um, had some theories about the metabolism that could occur on Titan. I think somebody asked a question about that in the last talk. So, you have uh, two papers that uh, presented hydrogenation processes. And the main one, which gave the most um, energy release, was actually acetylene. So, hydrogenating acetylene could be a process, a uh, metabolism process for these life forms. We, however, at the University of Hong Kong have just had a paper accepted by Astrobiology whilst we've been here at this conference, and therefore I can talk about it. Um, and our papers, basically, it lists a range of oxygen-free potential biochemistry. So what we've termed HCN or cyano biochemistry, and obviously, Oxygen-free would be very good for the surface of Titan, as it depends on how much um, oxygenated species you'd get on the surface, which we don't right know quite now, because there's a lot of differentiation between scientists on how much cryovolcanic activity you get, so whether you'd get things coming to the surface that are oxygenated. So one thing, this is an example um, that, we, that will be in this paper, is something we've termed cyanosugar. And this would actually um, in, yield a higher energy than what's been presented before. And in a redox reaction, we've also basically listed a whole range of macromolecules um, that could be formed from simple CHN uh, molecules like cyanide, imine, and what we've termed cyanoacids. And this is an example here of what we've termed uh, amino cyanoacid and forming a peptide. And as you can see, it, it goes down the same sort of processes as we use on Earth with our amino acids to form peptides. And here I've just given an example of the types of reactions that we think might be possible that might be um, useful for life in building up large functionalized 
macromolecules. So similar to life on Earth, you've got the redox reactions, you've got polymerization, hydrogen bonding, uh, bonding and ionization to form the larger molecules. So anyway, back to what I was actually originally going to talk about. So when I was interested in looking at what structures could form cell membranes, um, first of all, I was thinking um, I want to look at something that's like a reverse vesicle, so an inverted version of what we have here on Earth. So this is a uh, simplified like cell model <coughs> of what we have on Earth, where you have phospholipids, that you have the polar parts <coughs> pointing externally and internally, so this would be the internal of the cell, mem of the cell that's watery based and also the external water set in. And here you would and here you have um, it's stabilized by hydrogen bonding with the water. And when I first looked into this, a lot of biologists didn't think you could get the reverse version because you wouldn't have the hydrogen bonding with the water to stabilize these structures. But when I did a lot of uh, literature research, I finally found some had produced these structures and so what you get is you have the polar parts internalized in the bilayer and you'd have the non-polar solvent on the outside and on the inside and the actual reaction you get between the solvent and these non-polar parts is van der Waals forces which when you bring it, when you bring the system down in temperature is actually stronger. Um, so in terms of Titan, they might be far more relevant. And yes, so the systems I was looking at was based on research by Tung et al, uh, 2005. They had looked at phosphatidylchloine, so phospholipids, sodium chloride to balance out the internal bilayer, and they'd used cyclohexane. So based on that, I wanted to bring it further and further towards Titan. So what I, want, so what I did was, you have these key questions. So I wanted to see, can they also form in alkanes? Because single alkanes are quite different property. Um, to cyclohexane. If you bring the molecular weight down, so smaller alkanes, how will that affect the structures? Um, so in theory, you would have further solvent penetration into the bilayers, which could potentially completely change the structures. Uh, oh, go back. Uh, so yes, these are the molecules I used. So wild term PC18, which is the bigger one, PC4, smaller one, and Lyso PC. And I was looking at different ratios of these and how they would affect the structures as well. And also, obviously, we're very interested in sort of the low temperature effect. And actually, when it comes to any of these molecules, the effective surface area between the polar parts and the non-polar parts do actually change with changes in temperature and as soon as you get differences in the effective surface area, how they come together and form structures can completely change. So those were the main criteria I was looking at. And here's just some examples, I mean, had a lot of results. So here's just some more interesting ones. If I was looking at lower ratios, of just the big and the small phospholipids, what you'd get is these very large structures of compound micelles. And this wasn't what I was originally expecting. You, you wanted the reverse vesicles, which have an internalized liquid core, so to be like a cell membrane. However, these can have a use for life on Titan because uh, polar solutes, aren't very soluble in non-polar liquids. And what they could use these sort of structures for is to actually, well, smaller versions of these, you'd solubilize those poly, polar solvents, uh, solutes, 
and therefore be able to bring them into the cell and use them. At higher ratios, what we suddenly get is the, re the reverse vesicles we are looking for. And we have a different range of them. So sometimes you would get these very small, what we call unilamella reverse vesicles, so just one bilayer. You can also get multilamella reverse vesicles, which lots of bilayers all together. We also had these, which were really interesting, which is multi-compartmented reverse vesicles. So if you're looking for the possibility of something originating on Titan, you more or less have like a very nice cell, cell structure right there where you have the different compartments where you can perform different processes. And this is just self-assembled. Here we just have a picture of uh, the larger forms of unilamella reverse vesicles. And this is the fluorescence confocal picture. So you could go down the C-section and see exactly um, what it was doing. And when you added in the Lyso PC, so the one that was just had the one carbon tail, what we suddenly got was there was just reverse vesicles almost everywhere in most of the solvents we looked at at a high range of ratios. It did alter what we were looking at quite a bit. And with these smaller unilamella, smaller reverse vesicles, the unilamella kind, we'd get this tinodol scattering, and so it was quite easy to see it without even looking, using TEM or anything else. And even the ones that came down to the bottom, they were still, they clumped up, but they were still unilamella reverse vesicles, just a slightly larger scale. So when I was trying to look at cryogenic temperatures, I really needed to go to large institutes. So I ended up going to the ILL in France and Diamond in the UK, doing small angle neutron and small angle X-ray <coughs> scattering. And this is the one at Diamond here. And here we have me with dreadlocks on the uh, SANS instrument, the D11 at the ILL. And we have the cryostat that works here, that brings down the temperature. And for this one, you basically spray um, nitrogen gas to alter the temperature. So you can get temperatures down to closer to what you get in Titan. And once again, here's an example of the sort of things I would find. So here's one of the results of the um, heptane system system and this is the results in blue here and what I could fit was the elliptical vesicle model which is what I was hoping for but the main interesting thing is that once you bring it down in temperature so I was bringing it down to as low as I could possibly get before all heptane starts to freeze and we'd find that there wasn't much of a change. So the structure did not actually change. You kept the reverse vesicle shape. There was just slight changes in the actual size of the reverse vesicle. <coughs> um, some of the others did change their structure, but I like this one because it shows that you, know, you can get a decrease in temperature without the reverse vesicles becoming entirely unstable. And so we come to the answers to the key questions. And can we have reverse vesicles in alkanes? Can they be low molecular weight alkanes? And the answer is yes. In part, the main factor was the ratio of the types of long and short <coughs> phospholipids, uh, phospholipids used. And yes, so yes. It does affect it, and will the low temperature affect the type of self-assembly? Occasionally, but mainly you just get slight changes in the size of the vesicles. So that was just a general overview of what I've done, and 
I just hope I've convinced some of you that work into non-terrestrial based life is worth pursuing and is entirely hopeless. And um, yes, that's it from me. This is very short.